Welcome to the show. I'm Jonathan, and today we are talking about the 1977 Voyager 1 space probe. And why is this worth talking about if it's so old? Don't we have like newer tech out there? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Some really powerful tech actually, but we should be looking at Voyager 1 because its journey has been amazing and it's further out in space than anything else we have ever sent up there. It also has a lot of firsts under its belt, like first to reach interstellar space. So that's cool. Voyager 1 was the first spacecraft to cross the heliosphere, the boundary where the influences outside our solar system are stronger than those from our sun. And it discovered a thin ring around Jupiter and two new Jovian moons, Thebe and Metis. <laughs> That's right, Jupiter has a ring. At Saturn, Voyager 1 found five new moons and a new ring called the G-Ring. I mean, heck, it's such a big deal that one of the internet's favorite dads got it as his first tattoo. So this is the Voyager 1 space probe. And that's a bold placement for a first tattoo. It all starts back in the summer of 1965, when NASA calculated a perfect course to hit all four giant outer planets while using their gravity to swing off from one to the next. This alignment only happens once every 176 years, so the team and needed to get together and get this launch on September 5th, 1977. The next day, it sent back a photo of Earth and our moon. Then jump ahead to March 5th, 1979, and it makes its closest approach to Jupiter. Thanks to Voyager 1, we finally see that there is lightning on Jupiter, making it the first time we ever detected lightning beyond Earth. We also learned that Jupiter's giant red spot is a huge cyclone-like storm. Now we move along to November 9th, 1980, to get a close look at Saturn, which was only a year after Jupiter. At this time, we discover three moons, which confirms the scientific theory that moons like these have to exist for rings to keep their shape around a planet. We also learn that Saturn has an Earth-like atmosphere, the first nitrogen-rich atmosphere found outside our planet. Not an atmosphere we can live in though, which, yeah, that's a bummer. Now, we fast forward to February 14th, 1990 to get our infamous image called Pale Blue Dot. The Pale Blue Dot. Voyager is now 4 billion miles from our sun. This is the only set of images to contain Venus, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune around the sun. This is the last image to ever be captured by Voyager 1. Engineers had to turn off some systems like the camera so that it could reserve all energy for other data collection as it soars off into inter... inter, inter interstellar space. From this point on, Voyager 1 will never be close enough to objects to even take pictures, so we don't need to feel so bad about turning those systems off. But that's not the end of its story. February 17th, 1998, it passed the distance of Pioneer 10 to become the farthest human-made object from Earth. Then we had to wait until August 25th, 2012, where Voyager 1 finally reached interstellar space the first time anything made by humans would reach this far in space. But we actually couldn't even confirm this data until April 9th, 2013. Inside of Voyager 1 is a golden record. The intention was to offer a way to communicate with potential extraterrestrials. It's a 12 inch gold plated copper disc containing sounds and images that were intended to portray the diversity of life and culture on Earth. Just look at some of these images. The music has a lot of different songs from all over the world. It also has a ton of sounds like animals and machinery. And of course, we had recorded voice messages for our extraterrestrial friends, if they exist. <laughs> Hopefully they can figure out how to play this record. As of the writing of this episode, Voyager 1 has been in space for 44 years and 14.5 billion miles from Earth. It is currently moving at an astonishing 38,026 miles per hour. If we were able to move at light speed, we could actually travel to where Voyager 1 is right now in just 21 hours. The next big milestone for Voyager would be the Oort cloud. Uh, did I say that right? But that won't be for another 300 years. And the time left to reach another planetary system? Well, <laughs> that will be another 40,000 years. To learn how long it takes to reach everything else in our solar system, be sure to watch this video. And as always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today? <laughs>